Welcome to another GED reading lesson. This time we're going to talk about point of view. So first of all, what is point of view? Everything you read, regardless of whether it's fiction or nonfiction, has some sort of narrator. Point of view is the narrator's position or their perspective. So who is experiencing the event or the topic that you're reading about? All forms of communication, so not just things that you read, but also things you listen to, like music, or things you watch, like a movie or a TV show, all those forms of communication come from some point of view. So again, whether it's books, news articles, podcasts, movies, song lyrics, blog posts, even ads, there's always a point of view. There are three types of point of view. You have first person, second person. I'll bet you can't guess what the third one's called. Just kidding, third person. So first person, second person, third person. Pretty easy to remember. Here's how they're different. All right, in first person point of view, the narrator is talking about himself or herself. The narrator is the person who has experienced whatever they're writing about. In second person, the narrator will actually talk to the reader directly as if you're having a conversation. It's different than the narrator telling you about the event. They're literally involving you in the event. In third person, the narrator watches the story, but they aren't actually in the story. They're not a character. The best way to figure out whether something is first person, second person, or third person is to look at what pronouns are being used. So for first person, the pronouns that you watch for I, me, my, mine, myself, we, us, our, ours, ourselves. If you're seeing those pronouns in the actual narrative itself, then this is first person. Now, be careful that you're not looking at what's going on inside quotation marks because quotation marks are relating to you a conversation. So the pronouns inside quotation marks could be misleading. You wanna look at the text that is not part of conversation. Pronouns that tell you something is in second person. You, your, yours, yourself, yourselves. Very short list. So basically, if the word you is not part of the pronouns that are showing up, it's not second person. And third person, the pronouns to watch for. He, him, his, himself, she, her, hers, herself, it, its. All right. So first, second, or third, which is it? Well, first you need to determine who is the main character of the story. That's usually a pretty easy thing to do. Like if you're reading the Harry Potter novels, kind of a no brainer since his name is literally in the title. Does the narrative voice within the story refer to the main character as I? If so, that's first person. So in our Harry Potter example, the story does not say, I did this, I did that. So it's not a first person story. However, if you were reading The Hunger Games, that is written from first person. It tells you, I did this, I did that, I thought this, I thought that. Does the narrative voice within the story refer to the main character by his or her name and or use the pronouns he or she? If so, that's third person. So if we were reading a Harry Potter book, those books are written in third person. They refer to Harry by name when they're talking about things Harry does, and it also refers to him as he. Is there no main character? If you can't find a main character, that could be an indication of second person. Does the author keep breaking the fourth wall and referring to you, the reader? If so, second person's going on. So what I mean by breaking the fourth wall, that's like in a movie where a character looks directly at the camera and they kind of interact with you, the viewer, as though they know that you're there. That's breaking the fourth wall. 
And so if a book does that and it actually refers to you, it won't refer to you by name, obviously, but if it says you are reading this and you do such and such, that is second person. Here's another way to think of this. Imagine that you're playing a video game. If you are playing as an actual character that you control and you can see the character's full body on screen, that's first person. So think Mario, Animal Crossing. You're playing a specific character and you can see them completely. If you're playing with a VR headset and you don't see your character's full body on screen and you can interact with but not control the main character, that would be second person. And to date, there hasn't been a really good second person video game created for obvious reasons. It would pretty much suck. It would be really boring. If you're playing as a non-character godlike being that creates the environment or the story that the characters exist within or react to, that's third person. So think a game like City Skylines, The Sims, SimCity. Now some more information about first person. In a first person narrative, I, in quotes, am telling the story so the narrator is involved in some way, either as a character in the story or as an observer of the story. In other words, the information you're getting is firsthand information from an eyewitness of the events. Since everything is being told to you through one person's point of view, you are getting their opinions and perceptions mixed in with the facts. Now that can make the story more interesting. It can also make the story more complex. Because sometimes first person narrators are unreliable, either deliberately or by accident. That's one of the things that makes The Hunger Games a really interesting set of novels. Because Katniss is actually a terrible narrator. She doesn't know what's going on completely. She rushes to assumptions. She makes decisions based on incomplete information. And you're only getting the information that Katniss has at that time. So sometimes you get misled solely because of the narrator, Katniss. And that makes the book quite interesting because most authors don't do that with their narrator. Usually the first person narrator, at least the way we're trained, is um, to be reliable. We're supposed to believe them. Another good example, there's an Agatha Christie novel written many, many, many decades ago in which the main character slash narrator who's telling you the story actually turns out to be the murderer at the end of the book, which makes the book really interesting and also misleading because you're trusting the narrator and the narrator's giving you all the information to potentially solve the mystery. And then you get to the end and you find out the narrator didn't actually lie to you, but he withheld information. So some people, when that book was published, got very angry because they felt like the author had lied to them or deliberately deceived them. And in fact, Agatha Christie almost got kicked out of the Defect Detective Fiction Writers Club. Um, fortunately, some other authors stood up for her and were like, oh, come on, people. This is actually really clever. All right, some more information about second person. In second person, the story is being told to you specifically and the narrator is speaking directly to you. So you are directly involved in the story. Because second person point of view involves the reader directly, it's not very common in fiction because what it does is it essentially turns you into a character. Um, it's kind of hard to do that for an entire novel. So generally when that's done in fiction, it's done in short stories rather than novels. Although there are a couple examples of novels that do this for the whole book. It usually has to also be written in present tense in order to make sense if the story is being written in second person. And a lot of people don't actually like to read novels that are in present tense. So that also makes this form of writing a little bit less common. Now, usually this type of writing has a motive for involving you. The writer wants you to do something or to respond in some way. So it's more common in nonfiction. And I'll give you some examples in a little bit. Now, third person. 
the narrator keeps out of the story. They're telling you about it, but they're not actually participating. You don't know who they are or why they know all the events of the story. So like in the Harry Potter books, you don't actually know who the narrator is because the narrator is not a character. It's just sort of this godlike being that's seeing the story. Third person is quite common in both nonfiction and in fiction writing. Most commonly, the writer has you witness the story through the experiences of just one or a couple of characters. All right, so that's third person. Now, third person actually has two subtypes. So two types of third person point of view that you need to be aware of. First of all, there is what's known as third person limited. And second, there is third person omniscient. That word omniscient means like all seeing, all knowing. So third person limited. The narration is limited to the knowledge gained through one person's mind, heart, experience, feelings, etc. Um, the author isn't telling you what's going on in the heads of all the characters. So Harry Potter, which I've mentioned several times, is an example of third person limited. Generally, the story is just focused on what's going on with Harry. Every once in a while, you might get a chapter or like a prologue where it focuses on a different set of characters. But here again, it only focuses on one character at a time. You don't see inside the minds of all these other characters. Third person omniscient, the narrator has full knowledge of all the characters inside and out and all situations. Basically, it's a God view. Third person limited, tends to be more interesting in fiction than third person omniscient because third person omniscient since you know everything and you can see inside all the characters heads it doesn't really build up much suspense so how do authors use point of view to accomplish their purpose in writing well the author's point of view choice determines how close you as the reader get to the story so for this illustration, I have this little stick figure version of me. Let's see what you think. Which point of view do you think actually gets you closest to the story? First, second, third. You decide in your head and let's look. So third person omniscient, this is the kind of view of the story that you're getting. Basically this godlike bird's eye view and I would be able to see inside the heads of each of the characters. So I'd be able to see what each of these dinosaurs are literally thinking. Third person limited, I'd still get a bird's eye view, but I would primarily be getting that view through one character. So I'd kind of be focused on, on what's going on with just one of these dinosaurs and get to see inside their head. I wouldn't be able to see inside the heads of all the others. First person is very similar. I'm focused on the experience of one character and I'm kind of experiencing everything with them because this character is narrating to me what's happening. Second person, I am literally a character in this story. Now generally a lot of readers don't really like this. They find it a bit uncomfortable. Part of the reason readers find it off-putting is because in order for you to be a character in the story, the author has to basically dictate what you are thinking and doing. And most people don't really like that. They don't like someone else telling them what they're thinking and doing, even when it's just for the purpose of a fiction story. So do first person and third person limited give the same closeness to the story? Because that's what it seemed to indicate just a second ago. It really depends. So sometimes first person is closer because the narrator freely shares their feelings with you. But sometimes first person narrators aren't completely open or honest, or they just lack certain knowledge or self-awareness. Whereas a limited third person narrator is completely honest and may be more generous in sharing what a POV character or point of view character is thinking and feeling. So it depends. 
usually first person gets you closer to the story. Um, second person, closer still, but you don't really get that psychological closeness because again, it's being dictated to you and you tend to kind of repel against that. It's just a natural instinct. So some further comparison of first, second, third person. First person has some advantages. It's immersive. You have a close psychic distance between the reader and the character. It often feels more believable because you're hearing an eyewitness account. So news stories, they like to interview witnesses so that they can get a firsthand account. And it's more likely to evoke um, empathy or sympathy from the reader because you have that close psychic distance between you and the character. But some disadvantages of first person. If you don't like the main character, you often end up disliking the entire story. This has happened to me many times with books. If I can't build a sympathy with the main character, I end up hating the story if the main character is also the narrator. And in nonfiction, Writing in first person is considered a weaker, less academic way of writing, um, partly because the strength of what you're trying to say really depends on how much of an expert you are. And most people that are writing about something in like a news article are not necessarily the top expert. They're instead asking experts. So it's better if they write in third person and keep themselves out. Second person has some advantages. The ultimate immersive experience in fiction, you are literally in the story. And in nonfiction, it can motivate or manipulate readers into taking a desired action, which is why they love to use second person in advertisements. But some disadvantages. In fiction, as I've mentioned, the writer is essentially dictating to you your thoughts and actions, which most readers don't like. And if it goes on too long, it becomes mentally wearying. Third person advantages. It's a great way to give the reader a bird's eye view. It sounds more academic in nonfiction writing. And it comes across as more factual, at least factual sounding when it's used in nonfiction. So if you're doing college level writing after you finish with your GED, you're going to want to always write in third person unless you're specifically told to do otherwise. Some disadvantages of third person. Omniscient third person can get boring because it doesn't build suspense as well, which I mentioned earlier. And third person limited can be too limited and leave the reader confused if the author doesn't give you enough information. So some examples. First person I've mentioned, The Hunger Games is a great example. The Outlander series. Um, a Reddit post is typically written in first person. The example I have here is from the thread, Am I the A-hole? Or a lot of times GoFundMe will be in first person. So like this is an example of a GoFundMe where a parent was trying to raise money for their child's college education. Um, second person, the fifth season is a novel written in second person. Um, the Reluctant Fundamentalist is another example. There's not very many books, that is, not very many fiction books that are written in second person. So you probably can go all through a college degree without ever encountering one. Ads are often in second person, not always, but often. And also propaganda. So like this is an example from World War II of some propaganda the US government put out. And it was trying to get people to save their gas by carpooling. Third person, we've mentioned Harry Potter. Um, Game of Thrones series is third person. Tolkien's Fellowship of the Ring and subsequent novels are third person. Um, newspaper articles are typically going to be third person, except for the opinion column. The opinion column is usually first person. And scientific papers, those are going to be third person. So just for fun, 
here's a question I'm going to pose to you. Um, this is a Facebook profile from way back in the day, like a decade ago, how Facebook profiles used to look. So this is true. When Facebook first started, statuses could only be written in third person. So it would have your name and then you would write a status and it would be something like Stephanie Lynch is thinking about getting ice cream or Stephanie Lynch is blah, blah, blah. Um, so you had your name and then you had the word is. And then later, I believe they took away the word is, but you still had your name. So you basically had to write in third person. But later, as Facebook expanded and it grew, it changed to first person statuses. They took away that limitation. So there is no real right answer as far as I know. I mean, I suppose we could write to Mark Zuckerberg and ask, but why do you think they switched from third person to first person? My personal opinion, I think they did it to make Facebook more immersive. All right, let's do a little exercise. I have taken a passage from a novel. I'm going to show you how the same passage changes when it's written from different points of view. All right? So this passage comes from Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. This is the original passage, which is written in third person limited. Look, he murmured, holding out his arm to stop Malfoy. Something bright white was gleaming on the ground. They inched closer. It was the unicorn, all right, and it was dead. Harry had never seen anything so beautiful and sad. Its long, slender legs were stuck out at odd angles where it had fallen, and its mane was spread pearly white on the dark leaves. Harry had taken one step toward it when a slithering sound made him freeze where he stood. A bush on the edge of the clearing quivered. Then, out of the shadows, a hooded figure came crawling across the ground like some stalking beast. Harry, Malfoy, and Fang stood transfixed. The cloaked figure reached the unicorn, lowered its head over the wound in the animal's side, and began to drink its blood. All right, so that's the original, which again is third person. Specifically, it's third person limited. Let's change it up. Look, I murmured, holding out my arm to stop Malfoy. Something bright white was gleaming on the ground. We inched closer. It was the unicorn, all right, and it was dead. I had never seen anything so beautiful and sad. Its long, slender legs were stuck out at odd angles where it had fallen, and its mane was spread pearly white on the dark leaves. I had taken one step toward it when a slithering sound made me freeze where I stood. A bush on the edge of the clearing quivered. Then, out of the shadows, a hooded figure came crawling across the ground like some stalking beast. Malfoy, Fang, and I stood transfixed. The cloaked figure reached the unicorn, lowered its head over the wound in the animal's side, and began to drink its blood. So, what point of view is this one? Look at the pronouns. You'll notice that I changed the pronouns to I, we. So, this is first person. Now you see how it makes the story feel different? You feel closer to the story because you are now having an eyewitness account told to you. In this instance, it kind of makes it feel a little bit creepier. All right, here's one more change to the passage. Look, you murmur, holding out your arm to stop Malfoy. Something bright white is gleaming on the ground. You inch closer. It's the unicorn, all right, and it's dead. You have never seen anything so beautiful and sad. Its long, slender legs are stuck out at odd angles where it fell, and its mane is spread pearly white on the dark leaves. You take one step toward it when a slithering sound makes you freeze where you stand. A bush on the edge of the clearing quivers. Then, out of the shadows, a hooded figure comes crawling across the ground like some stalking beast. You, Malfoy, and Fang stand transfixed. The cloaked figure reaches the unicorn, lowers its head over the wound in the animal's side, and begins to drink its blood. Now see what happened with the pronouns? You are actually a character in this story. So this is second person. And you see how it changes the way the story feels? 
it's much more immersive, but at the same time, it's kind of a little bit off-putting. So question for you, why do you think JK Rowling made the choice to write the Harry Potter books in third person limited? What would be an advantage of writing it in first person, for example? Well, as we saw in the passage, it could have been a little bit more immersive if she'd written in first person. She could have used Harry still as her main character and you could have followed Harry as he's learning everything. But there would be some disadvantages. Can you think of any? One disadvantage that I think of is because Harry is an outsider coming into a new world, you know, he grows up as a muggle and then he comes into the wizarding world. He doesn't have very much background knowledge. So when you have a third person narrator, they can explain all kinds of things that Harry doesn't necessarily see or understand. But if Harry's your narrator, he's gonna be telling you about everything he sees, but you're also gonna be limited to his point of view. And he's gonna be telling you his own assumptions. Now, as a third person limited narrator, JK Rowling does kind of mislead you sometimes or try to be a little bit tricky and suspenseful with some of the information she gives you, but it would be much more so if she was using first person. And that could be really cool or it could fail. What about second person? Can you think of advantages or disadvantages of second person? Well, first of all, think about how impossibly hard it would have been for her to write seven novels, including the size of some of those novels. Like, novel number seven is a honking big book. Imagine trying to do that whole thing in second person, and it would have to essentially be written in present tense for it really to work with you as a character. It'd be pretty exhausting. I don't think it would be quite the page turner. Now, what about third person omniscient? What if instead of giving you this limited view, what if she told you what was also going on in the minds of Hermione and Ron and Snape and Voldemort? Well, it basically would kill all the suspense. You'd have a lot more information about the wizarding world and there'd be many things that you might be confused about in the books that would no longer be confusing. But at the same time, it'd be a little bit problematic because like in the fourth book, Goblet of Fire, one of the teachers is not actually the person they're pretending to be. They took Polyjuice Potion and they're posing as someone else. If the author was using third person omniscient, you would know from the very beginning that that person is pretending to be someone else. So it kind of kills the big reveal, right? And so you think about third person limited and some advantages. Well, one advantage is she picked a point of view character who, as I said, is an outsider. So you, the reader, can encounter this exciting new world along with Harry. When Harry gets something explained to him that he doesn't understand, it's also explaining it to you, the reader. That's a pretty cool way of handling a narrative. And by limiting your point of view to just what Harry knows and experiences, there's a lot of suspense in the books, which is why they're page turners. You gotta keep reading to see what's gonna happen. Let's do a similar activity with a song. So we're gonna change song lyrics from first person to third person. So I've taken a popular song, Before He Cheats, sung by Carrie Underwood. Um, just picked a section of the song, the chorus. I dug my key into the side of his pretty little souped up four wheel drive, carved my name into his leather seats. I took a Louisville slugger to both headlights. I slashed a hole in all four tires. Maybe next time he'll think before he cheats. So how do we turn this from first person into third person. Well, we've got to change the pronouns. All right, so here are the pronouns. Now, we're gonna leave the pronoun he'll and his and he alone because those are gonna stay the same regardless. 
he is not the main character. I am the main character. Or whoever's singing the song is the main character. All right, so what would we change I to? She. What about my? Her. Right, so the second my also becomes her. I, she, I, she. She dug her key into the side of his pretty little souped up four wheel drive, carved her name into his leather seats. She took a Louisville slugger to both headlights. She slashed a hole in all four tires. Maybe next time he'll think before he cheats. Now you notice how just changing those five words, those five pronouns, it actually changes how the song feels. So when the song is sung from first person, most people actually have sympathy with the person who's singing. They're thinking, oh yeah, you go girl, you show that nasty cheater, teach him a lesson. But when you change it to third person, she dug her key into the side, she carved her name, she took a Louisville slugger to his headlights, it actually takes away some of the sympathy that most people have for this main character. She ends up just looking like a crazy ex-girlfriend. And it kind of draws more attention to all the stuff she did. All right, let's look at some passages. And I want you to try to identify which type of point of view you're reading, okay? So do this on your own. Here's a little bit of advice of how to do this. Tip number one, focus your attention on the pronouns. The pronouns are the biggest giveaway. Tip number two, remember to ignore pronouns that are inside quotation marks because those are part of conversation and so they're not really helpful to you. Tip number three, if you see first person or second person pronouns and they are not inside quotation marks or clearly intended as thoughts or dialogue, you can usually ignore all the other pronouns. If you see first person, you know it's first person. You see second person, you know it's second person. Fourth tip for you, if it's in third person, pay attention to how many people's thoughts you're allowed to see because that will tell you whether it's limited or omniscient. And just as a quick review, these are the pronouns you wanna look out for. So first person, I, me, mine, mine, myself, ourselves, ours, our, us, we. Second person, you, your, yours, yourself, yourselves. Third person, he, him, his, himself, herself, hers, her, she, it, its. All right, here's our first passage. This comes from A Sword of Storms by George R. R. Martin. It's one of the Game of Thrones novels. Mercy, Catelyn cried, but horns and drums and the clash of steel smothered her plea. Sir Ryman buried the head of his axe in Daisy's stomach. By then, men were pouring in the other doors as well, mailed men in shaggy fur cloaks with steel in their hands. Northmen! She took them for rescue for half a heartbeat till one of them struck the small John's head off with two huge blows of his axe. Hope blew out like a candle in a storm. All right, what is it? Let's look at the pronouns. So are those first person, second person, or third person pronouns? Those are third person pronouns. But now we gotta figure out, is this limited or omniscient? We know it's third person, so whose thoughts or perceptions are we given in this passage? Let's look at it again. Took them for rescue. That's a thought right there. It's telling you about an assumption. She, referring to Catelyn, assumed that these Northmen who came in are here to rescue her. Here's another thought. Hope blew out. Whose hope? Catelyn's hope. So, how many people's thoughts and perceptions are we given? Just one. So this is third person limited. Here's another example, the Hunger Games. It's this detail, the untucked blouse forming a ducktail that brings me back to myself. Prim, the strangled cry comes out of my throat and my muscles begin to move again. Prim, I don't need to shove through the crowd. 
The other kids make way immediately, allowing me a straight path to the stage. I reach her just as she's about to mount the steps. With one sweep of my arm, I push her behind me. I volunteer, I gasp. I volunteer as tribute. All right, let's look at our pronouns. And are those first person, second person, or third person? They are first person. This comes from The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemison. You're the mother of two children, but now one of them is dead and the other is missing. Maybe she's dead too. You discover all this when you come home from work one day. House empty, too empty. Two little boy, all bloody and bruised on the den floor. Find the pronouns. And are those first person, second person, or third person? Second person. Hope you're enjoying my little drum roll. <laughs> All right, here's another passage. This comes from Brokeback Mountain. During the day, Ennis looked across a great gulf and sometimes saw Jack, a small dot moving across a high meadow as an insect moves across a tablecloth. Jack, in his dark camp, saw Ennis as night fire, a red spark on the huge black massive mountain. So let's look at pronouns. We only have one pronoun. So that tells us his, that this is third person, but we need to figure out whether it is limited or omniscient. So whose thoughts and perceptions are we given? Let's go on a hunt and find thoughts or perceptions. So here's one, saw Jack, and it says what he saw him as, a small dot moving across a high mountain, blah, blah, blah. So that's a perception right there. Here's another perception. This is how someone sees Ennis. So this first perception saw Jack. Who is seeing Jack? Ennis. Now who is seeing Ennis? Jack. So we have third person omniscient because we've got two points of view and we're being given both of them. We're seeing inside two characters' heads. All right, here's another one. Complicity by Ian Banks. You hear the car after an hour and a half. During that time, you've been here in the darkness, sitting on the small telephone seat near the front door, waiting. You only moved once after half an hour when you went back through the kitchen to check on the maid. Pronouns. And this one's easy. What are those pronouns? Are they first person, second person, or third person? They are second person. Excellent. Let's do our last one. Never let me go. My name is Kathy H. I'm 31 years old and I've been a carer now for over 11 years. That sounds long enough, I know, but actually they want me to go on for another eight months until the end of this year. That'll make it almost exactly 12 years. Now, I know my being a car carer so long isn't necessarily because they think I'm fantastic at what I do. And the pronouns, first, second, or third, they are first. All right. Thanks for taking the time to view this lesson. I hope it was helpful.